Hello there. This video is just going to go through some of the questions and concerns that have been raised about the Tepio Zeb and some of the equivalent uh, other versions. So this isn't an attack on Tepio and I really applaud any innovation that can help us to decarbonize. But there are some legitimate questions that need to be asked and some answers that need to be found. So um, in this video, I'm mainly going to be comparing it to the biggest competitor, the air source heat pump. And I'm talking about a residential environment, of course. So let's just flick through some of my slides here. As a preface, um, this is not an attack. Uh, last time I spoke about another decarbonization product, which I won't name, the company contacted me and sent me a really nice threatening uh, email with some great threats in there. But anyway, let's move on from that. And secondly, if you can't watch the full five to 10 minutes that this video is, the short version is if you can physically accommodate a heat pump outside your home, just get one. That's it. Okay, so here's the capital cost, 2024 average, the Tepio Zeb, £6,000 for the product and about they say on their website average installation costs are two thousand pounds bringing the total up to eight thousand pounds the average price now for a heat pump has fallen down to seven and a half grand that is after the seven and a half grand government grant of course there are people out there who are getting these 500 pound heat pumps installed thousand pounds two thousand pounds but the average is still 7,500. Either way you look at it, in terms of capital cost, a heat pump, an air source heat pump is now cheaper than something like a Tepio Zeb. Okay, um, the downside of a Tepio Zeb is it needs to be ground floor. It has, it's 375 kilos, so it can't be carried up. It can't be moved anywhere else. They will only install it on a ground floor and you need to have the size of basically your washing machine it's that sort of standard uh, appliance size. Um, it still requires a hot water cylinder, so it doesn't work like a combi boiler, at least not yet. They may have something in the pipeline, so keep your eyes open for that. It needs, subsequently, for most people, it needs more internal room than a heat pump because you're still going to need a cupboard with a hot water cylinder, but you're also going to need this appliance space for this big thermal store that the Tepio Zeb is as well. So depending on how your house layout is, you will need more internal space. Um, the business model is, of course, reliant on smart tariffs, and you'll see why in a minute. If you haven't done any research on a Tepio Zeb, these are my figures. So if I'd have put a Tepio Zeb in to heat our home and the hot water over the five winter months, the heat pump um, used 1,863 kilowatt hours of electricity and it multiplied that up and it generated 7,485 kilowatt hours of heat. Now, the Tepio Zeb is 100% efficient and the only thermal losses will be around the actual Zeb itself. So if you do mount it in a garage, you're going to end up with a little bit of a heated garage because it, it can't insulate all of the heat in the thermal store. So apparently it doesn't emit as much as an actual radiator, but there will still be some thermal losses around that. Anyway, um, this is what this would convert to in pounds, and I've done a little bit of uh, correction factor. Um, basically, if you took all of the uh, kilowatt hours that my heat pump used in electricity, uh, my average rate on the Octopus Tracker tariff for winter was 18 pence. I actually brought that down a little bit when I jumped over to Octopus Agile, but I want to give the Zeb uh, the kind of best case scenario. If I could put myself on octopus go so i've got the nine pence overnight rate to charge up the zeb at the cheapest rate it would have been 674 pounds but as you'll see in the in the next few slides that actually be impossible for me in my home um and tapio say that the zeb could accommodate a home that uses up to 12,000 kilowatt hours per annum which it looks like my house is going to be under that so I don't know how they work out their calculations exactly but as you will see the Zeb has a, a max capacity of 40 kilowatt hours so if it only charges up once a day in the early hours of the morning it's not going to see us through a day of heating and hot water my worst winter day 
of this previous this winter that we've just come out of was 122 kilowatt hours of heating and hot water that isn't the electricity that i used that's the heat that was generated by my heat pump and most of winter the heat pump was generating more than 40 kilowatt hours per day so we would have been sure for at least half nearly three quarters of the winter i was going to go through and do some actual statistical analysis but i think you get the point that the zeb is not big enough for what if you're a long time watcher to the channel you know we just got a modest four bed detached house 140 square meters we're not living in buckingham palace or anything and finally something that uh, i've seen brought up a few times of course, in many ways, there's a lot more moving parts in heat pumps, but they are a tried and tested technology. And people always talk about servicing, which on a heat pump, it is more expensive than a gas boiler. We have to concede that. But Tepio Zeb also requires servicing. So what did I miss in this little slideshow? Let me know in the comments. If this kind of content is helpful for you, then do your youtube -y stuff. Like and subscribe. Um, I... I think that we need to all get on board with heat pumps and we need to help what in a, any way that we can to m help that transition and push things forward. And some of these other ideas and innovations like this Tepio Zeb and I previously spoke about infrared heating, there can be some niche cases where these can work. There are some cases where people legitimately don't have any space outside for an air source heat pump but those are few and far between between floor and wall mounting most properties will be able to accommodate it and if we're talking about flats then really we need to look at district network heating long term to resolve some of those concerns there um what else did i miss um yeah these innovations can be good but are they also potentially a distraction between heat pumps which is from the energy that we are actively putting into it. it is an energy multiplier but really it's just working on transfer and all that latent energy and bringing it inside our homes where we want it so it's redirecting it but as you can see the capital cost i mean my heat pump for example the one on the right there that you see that's a five kilowatt valent i've got a slightly bigger one seven kilowatt but our heat pump was about £4,000, including everything, installation after the grants. The Tepio Zeb also isn't VAT exempt, like a lot of other renewable energy technologies are. So the Tepio, in terms of capital costs, would have been double for us. And as you can see, if we give the Tepio every little bit of advantage that we possibly can, the running costs are more than double. Here we go. 674 compared to 335. Okay, I that's you know, it's all it's close to double. We could just say that the running cost would be double on a Tepio Zeb compared to a heat pump if the Tepio Zeb is reliant on a heat pump. But of course, those smart tariffs could change at any time, and then the Tepio Zeb can completely fall mm. over. The Tepio has had a lot of exposure because they put one into Robert Llewellyn's home that runs fully charged and everything electric and stuff and um, of course it's gained a lot of publicity through that that doesn't necessarily mean it's good um, you can see that uh, his home is uh, I would actually like to see his breakdown on his figures I'd like to see how many times a day he recharges his Zeb because my guess is just complete you know Back it uh, back blah, blah, blah. back of a cereal box calculation. Let's use that one today. I don't think he's he could get through a day on forty kilowatt hours. Just what I've seen. There's some drone shots and stuff of his home. I presume his heat loss is higher than ours, and I expect he is charging and recharging that Zeb once, twice, three times a day in the depths of winter. I don't think it's economical to run at all. And I'd love to see the figures and I'd love him to be a bit more transparent to that. So it's an invitation for you, Robert. Share with us. And ultimately, I think you should be changing over to a heat pump and you will halve your energy bills straight away. That's all from me and my cynical side and my pessimism but a lot of you are asking and i just wanted to put this down so that in the future the next some time someone asks i'll just send them a link instead of retyping the same thing 50 times goodbye for now